we can now introduce the correlation coefficient. So the covariance, which we write as just the average value of the um, product of x minus its mean and y minus its mean, we know now that that captures the average linear relationship between x and y with their means removed. So x minus e of x and y minus e of y. And here's some examples of different distributions. This one with covariance one, this one with covariance half, and this one also with covariance one. That's kind of funny because the two distributions towards the left, so the left one and the middle one look similar, except the middle one is shrunk down, but they have different covariances. Whereas the distribution on the right has the same covariance as the distribution on the left, but it looks much more stretched out. So what's going on here is that the covariance is quite sensitive to the scale of x and y. So between the left and the middle, I've scaled down x and y, and that affected the covariance, whereas the distribution on the right is both scaled and stretched to get the same covariance as the distribution on the left. So to get around this, we introduce the correlation coefficient, which we write as rho xy, and that is a scale invariant measure of the average linear relationship between x and y. Okay, and the way we define it is we just write rho xy as the covariance divided by the square root of the variance of x times the variance of y. In these examples, the correlation coefficient here was half, here it was half, and here it was actually 0.95. And the way to think about this is that the correlation coefficient is closer to one if a line with positive slope does a really good job of capturing the distribution. And that's true on the right because it's 0.95 and you can see that it's almost a line, this stretched out distribution, whereas the two distributions on the left are sort of captured by a line, but there's a lot of variation that's not captured by a line. Some basic properties. So the most important one to keep in mind, and this is what helps us get the scale invariant property, is that it lies between minus one and plus one. And it's plus one if and only if y can be written as a linear function of x for some positive a, and it's negative one if and only if y can be written as ax plus b, so a linear function, for some negative a in whatever b you'd like. The covariance we can just recover by um, getting rid of the denominator, so multiplying by the square root of the product of the variances. And x and y are uncorrelated. This just means the covariance is zero, if and only if rho is zero. And that makes sense because rho is really just the covariance divided by the square root of the product of the variances. If we have a linear function of x and a linear function of y, and we ask about the correlation coefficient, all we need to do is see if the sign has changed. Okay, and the sign is really just if the thing that we're putting into this sign argument is positive, then we say the sign is plus one, so it's just the sign of the argument z, and if we put in something negative, then it's minus one, and if it's zero, we just say it's zero. So basically, if x and y had a certain relationship captured by rho xy, and then we multiply, we scale them, that scale is not going to change the correlation coefficient, it might only just change the sign, because if I make, if u and v are, have a positive correlation coefficient, and then I make v a negative version of y, then I just need to adjust the correlation coefficient to be negative. And finally, the intuition should be that the closer the absolute value of rho is to one, the better a line explains the relationship between x and y. That line can have any slope except zero, it's just a question of how close the distribution stays to that line. Okay, let's work out a longer example. So here, you're gonna learn that the variance of x is four, the variance of y is one, and that x and y are independent. And we're not gonna give you any more information about the distribution, we don't need any more than that. And what we're gonna look at are two linear functions. So x plus y is v, and minus two plus three y is w, and we wanna work out some quantities. So specifically, the correlation coefficient between x and v. So that's gonna be the covariance of x and v divided by the square root of the variance of x times the variance of y, sorry, v. And we have one of these terms, the variance of x. So we need the variance of v 
and the covariance of x and v. So for the variance of v, we use this function, our linear function variance formula. And so we see we get a squared variance of x plus b squared variance of y plus 2ab covariance of x and y in general. In this particular case, x and y are independent, and the properties of covariance tell us that that means the covariance has to be zero. Okay, so intuitively, since x and y have no relationship because they're independent, they definitely don't have a linear relationship. So this covariance is zero, and we can just cross it out. So the variance of v is just going to be the variance of x plus y. In this case, a and b are 1. So I just get 1 squared times the variance of x, which is 4, plus 1 squared times the variance of y, which is 1, and I get 5. For the covariance of x and v, I'm going to use this formula for the covariance of linear functions. So that's going to be ad times the variance of x plus be times the variance of y plus another term that's going to end up being zero because in this case, the covariance is zero. Okay, so we're just going to cross out this last term. All right, in general, you might not be able to do that. So the covariance of x and v is just going to be the covariance of x and x plus y. So the coefficients here are 1 times 1 times the variance of x plus 0 times 1 times the variance of y. And the 0 comes from the fact that um, uh, x is just a very simple function of x and y with b equals to 0. So this is ultimately 4. We just plug in, we get 4 over square root of 4 times 5. That's 2 over the square root of 5, and that's about 0.894. So in fact, there's a pretty good re linear relationship between x and v, and that kind of makes sense because v is mostly x plus y, and x has more variance, so more energy of x is in y, or is in v, and it's um, perturbed a bit by the variance of y. Okay, what about the correlation coefficient between v and w? We're going to follow the exact same process. We're just going to work out a couple of extra terms. So we need the covariance of v and w now, and we also need the variance of w. We have the variance of v above. Okay, so this is going to be um, the same thing. Variance of w is going to be minus 2 squared times 4 plus 3 squared times 1, which is just 16 plus 9, which is 25. Okay, and the covariance of v and w is going to be the covariance of x plus y, and minus 2x plus 3y. So plugging in those coefficients, we're going to get 1 times minus 2 times 4 plus 1 times 3 times 1. That's minus 8 plus 3, which is minus 5. Overall, we get minus 5 over the square root of 5 times 25. You can simplify that a bit to get minus 1 over the square root of 5, about negative 0.447.